I gotta keep dancing. <laughs> I'm Alana, how are you? Good evening, a, Ashok. Good I evening. am good. So good to see you. Yes, it's a wet day here in Singapore, at least where I'm from. And uh, how's the weather over there in KL? Uh, it's gloomy, but it's a nice okay. gloominess. It's, it's, right. it's a nice gloominess. And we already have Sandeep Kulkarni has joined us all the Hello, way. Hello, Sandeep. Hello, Hello Sandeep. Sandeep. And uh, and he has come in and said hi for the month of October. We've just finished September, right? And I'm so excited. It, you know, there is a change in the music. I've got to talk about that. I like it anyway. Uh, <laughs> the intro music, you know, slightly different. So, yes, the month of October, we're talking about talent development. We've just finished with talent retention. Now we are going to be swinging to talent development and... Any comments, Mar, before you bring in your guests? <laughs> what kind of comments are you looking at? Better not. I think okay. we keep our comments and summaries for the last week of the month. So I'm All excited right. because I think we've had a, quite an interesting transition. I've learned a lot, you know, yep. talking about, um, you know, uh, talent acquisition, then yep. going into uh, retention last month. That's right? right. And getting sort of stuck with quiet quitting a couple of times. And really, you know, nice to move into talent development because that's one way to actually keep the retention and the acquisition uh, in a better space. And I am so excited, actually more than excited, very grateful because I met this very quiet, humble, introverted, serious, deep learning leader. Nice. Who's based in Indonesia, right? And when right. I first met her, I remember, right, Chamni and I went to, went to see her. I was thinking like, oh my God, she's so serious. And then I started having conversations with her. And every time I had conversations with her, it was okay. a very deep, um, very deep learning conversation. All right. Very value centric, right? And when I invited her, so, so when, you know, when she got into the invitation list, and Chamni said, no, we must call uh, Mashi as we call her, right? I had to pray, let's say, a prayer before uh, sending the message out because chances of her saying yes was so minimal, right? But she said yes. And nice. up since then, we've been counting on blessings. So we're really, really, very fortunate, excited, happy, grateful to have a, a, a client whom I would call a friend uh, who has, you know, you, you don't have many clients who will share learning resources and challenges mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. things and uh, be open and transparent about um you know uh what what she needs right that's what i learned about uh Marshi while working with her and pre and post in between conversation right nice. and she comes with lots of experience in lnd right now um you know um heading um Citibank indonesia now we know that we invite you know when i invited her you know she was like really thinking about it and i told Marshi, you know the reason we love to have your voice in leadership in flow is really to understand how you think about learning because she's so passionate about learning, not only for her people, but for herself. 
exactly. right? Exactly. And yeah, and you would see that from the track record. So um, that's Marshi, um, you know, who has been in the banking industry for quite a number of years. So let's bring her in and. You know, you have got to know her, Ashok, and uh, I'm sure you find her as exciting as I do. Yes, I've got to know her as virtually. I've not had the pleasure like you seeing her in person yet. <laughs> yes, let's Marsh. bring her on because I'm sure the guests are all excited, all waiting for Marsh. Hello, Marsh. Hello. Good afternoon. Well, good evening, everyone. And welcome to Leadership in Flow. For the month of October, you are the first speaker who's going to kick off and set us such a high standard. <laughs> No, 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 don't worry about it. Uh, you know what I like about you, Marsh? I mean, uh, uh, Malo was uh, introducing you to everyone, but the the time I got to spend time with you virtually, I got to learn that you enjoy learning. You know, I enjoy that. Uh, I learned that uh, you're very curious and, and you set certain goals for yourself in terms of being consistent, even in your personal development space. You know, and that's why you jumped in to learn yoga and you were sharing with us how you're going to be learning about free diving and even archery. You know, I like the fact that you're always pushing the envelope and trying to learn new things, you know, and, and, and it's so typical of a learning and development person because you're a real practitioner at a personal level. And I, I guess at this point in time, what we're going to do is we, we want to hear from you from your professional space, all right? Because I'm sure a lot of it is interlinked, right? Um, uh, yes, we have all gone through COVID. We have heard about it. Um, I guess maybe some people are still in denial <laughs> after three years. <laughs> but from your point of view, Marsh, right? What are the new areas that are emerging for leaders in the development space? Okay. Uh, first of all, Malar and uh, Ashok, thank you for having me at this this afternoon or this evening, um, different time zones will, will, will tell that. Uh, mm -hmm. When we talk about what are the new areas for developments that is you know, emerging for leaders, I would like to look at from the environments first. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't just jump to the person or the learners or the leaders themselves. But let's take a look on the environment, which I believe has changed significantly. Okay. We can't say you know, we would like to go back to pre-pandemic or whether it is pandemic or even, can we call it a post-pandemic now? Um, I don't prefer to give a, a terminology for that, but what I believe, and it appears to me that, it appears that another wave is coming our way that we have to face soon. You know, for examples like, you know, supply chain challenge, energy shortage, um, all these will impact on how the new areas that de uh, developments for the leaders. So how we can reflect this for ourselves. And as we move along in this conversation, you will hear a lot of the term like reflect because I like associate that I love to reflect this. I like to take upon this and see how I can do things differently and how I can do that for my stakeholders. Um, so if I reflect this for myself and for leaders that I work with, uh, especially given my role as a talent learning person. And in my humble opinion, collaboration definitely is the new areas because the collaboration is just not the collaboration itself. You know, we may understand what it means, but in the current environment, which changes constantly, this will actually change the way how we collaborate. Mm -hmm. Are we actually having certain ratio of using the technology to collaborate. Okay. Uh, what actually the base ratio for certain leaders, different industries, different roles, for examples. And more importantly, because of the environment that we have, we are not used to be like the 100% face to face. We are definitely from hybrid. Some of the, uh, the charts that shown earlier, that people still very much into hybrid. Mm -hmm. I think the role of the leader, they need to play more being an inclusive leader. Uh, you may have team not in the office. You may have the team work from home. You may have the team work from somewhere else. Doesn't mean that you don't get to see them. You forgot to mention or highlight things that they do in a meeting, for example. Okay. Small thing as like that. And I guess pick up the the skill set on digital or technology, anything that you can you can learn to pick up. Like 
for myself before pandemic, I'm not so much a believer of, you know, buying the food online. Mm-hmm. I like to go to, because I like to explore. I like to do the restaurant. Sure. I know that what I'm going to eat, but I, I like to try this and like to try that. I love okay. going to supermarket to surprise okay. me. But <laughs> that's where I think we need to learn. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm hearing from you is uh, the, the mindset that we need to take is we, we need to look at the environment itself, not just focus on putting labels to the environment, but look at the environment. And what I'm hearing from you is there are more waves coming. For example, you said uh, we're going to have a lot of economic uh, headwinds coming along from supply chain, from inflation, so on and so forth. So we need to be aware about these waves of changes that are coming. And one thing I'm hearing from you is the importance, the importance of collaboration. Regardless of all these uh, waves that are coming, collaboration is a very key thing that you're looking at, right? Uh, And whether you enable it from a technology point of view or even when you're having a hybrid working environment. So collaboration is a a new, I mean, because of new areas that are coming through, collaboration is an important uh, thing that we need to focus on. Okay, I got that. Uh, Malar, you want to chime in? Oh, but before that, before you chime in, let's see what Sandeep has said. Changes across internal and external environment are challenges impacting aligning with main vision statement. Okay, thank you very much for sharing that, Sandeep. I think I like to take this question in uh, after uh, Malar has commented to see what is uh, Marsha's opinion. Do you have any comments so far, Malar? No comments. No, I thought um, you know, Marshi uh, actually really got me to become uh, aware, right? Because you see, one of those things that you said, which which I think that we can miss out is that you know, when we talk about collaboration, we always tend to think about the norms, which is coming together, right? Yeah. And what Marshi said is, you know, being digitally savvy is is almost foundational. Is 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 crucial, right? Yeah. Uh, for us to to just work together, right? And, you know, uh, especially in collaboration. Now, while we're doing that, I'm not too sure how many of us will, will consciously think about who is missing in the room, right? Mm. Because their contribution, their output might be used in, in, in the work process, in the mm. outcome. But, you know, to actually become aware as a leader who actually contributed and whether the visibility is given to them, right? Is, I think that that for me might seem a minute thing that mm-hmm. is so critical, right? For as leaders, we need to now, so what I'm hearing from uh, Marshi when she said that is that, hey, sometimes we are paying attention to the big changes and the big development ideas that we need to be. But actually, the things that's really going to matter would be the small things that you may not have thought about. Like, you know, when people are not in the room, do we actually know who is contributing? Because we know last month when you spoke about retention, we spoke about quiet retention, we talk about, you know, um, loss and engagement, right? And in this month's chart, um, I've actually put up, you know, how, you know, most, most of us would actually go into hybrid, which means that, not everybody is going to be at the same place all the time visible. Exactly. Right? Uh, yeah. And I and I think that um, that's got me thinking. So thank you, Mashi, for that. And I know you're dying to ask Mashi question. So you ask. <laughs> no, no. <okay. laughs> it's like, I just asked her for a comment. Why does she have to yeah. say so much? I want to talk to Marsh. Okay, talk. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, so in this in this uh, new new environment, right? Uh, what you're seeing, uh, what kind of development will then be relevant for leaders? Okay. Um, when I would like to answer a question, I always look at the background first. You know, okay. same thing with these questions like, why do leaders need development, and what top mm-hmm. developments are relevant to them? But let's take a look on. Seeing development is actually in a proactive approach. It's an investment to oneself, to yourself, to themselves. Like, so before pandemic, we need this, but even now we need this even more. Why? Because everyone, their learning journey, their learning needs is unique to the each learner. Mm. Okay. We may provide the same programs, but how they picked up, how they learn, 
do they have exactly the same needs? It may be yes, it may be no. Maybe the same program, but in that program, there are three modules. I might just want to pick that one only. Others may pick on a different module, for example. So that's what I'm saying, like, different learners, they have a different needs, especially the journey may not be the same. It's always unique to the learner themselves. So okay. what I'm trying to say here is actually, so we need to consider where they are at the moment, what the stage they are in currently. They also need to look at, have they incorporated feedback from their stakeholders? Mm -hmm. So before we actually see that, do they need this? Mm -hmm. If they don't reflect it on their own, why am I needing this? What things that I need to solve, for example, if not, they will not go for developments. Now we are talking about what type of developments are relevant. Again, if it is not relevant to me right now, I'm not going to pick up that learning, then I don't have the learning needs. So if leader themselves also do not develop themselves, it's hard for them to influence their team members to do that. Okay. 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 Uh, I, I think that's where I'm coming from. No, I, I hear you. Uh, mm. Looking at also a while ago that we mentioned that the environment change. Mm. I think the hybrid sets a very different tone, okay. uh, different setup for learning. Okay. Okay. So in that sense, if I go in a bit more granular and go down again, uh, what has a leader's mass change for today's world? And I know you've got a comment about Mars and you said it has to be rearranged. So I'm going to let you explain what Mars is to the, our Sorry. listeners. Oh, you know, is going to come in. Sorry, before that, I thought it would be good for us to just introduce Mars and then... Sure, sure, sure. Mars Go ahead. To, because I think, you know... So um, I'm trying to... Um, we, we actually coined the word Mars uh, so that it's easy to, to, to pronounce it. So M for mindset. So what mindset. are the what, what is the mindset awareness skills and knowledge required for leaders today right for uh for development so we're looking at you know how has how does how has or how does our mindset need to be as leaders um you know what kind of awareness do we need skills and knowledge so to you uh Marshi, so for those who are listening m-a-s-k um that's the abbreviation for it so i'll just put it up in the chat Sure. Okay. Mindset, awareness, skills, and knowledge for leaders. So, what has the uh, how has a leader's mass changed for today's world? Okay. Um, when I ponder on the questions um, again, my structured mind and try to understand how can I, you know, explain this in my own ways. Um, mass certainly easy for us to remember what the acronym means, but sure. the way we look at each word, mind, awareness, skill, and knowledge, the way I'm going to rearrange for better explanations for me is actually start with the A, which is the awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mind, uh, mindset, mindset, and then knowledge, and then skill. See, because you can't go anywhere else in those words if you don't have the awareness first. Okay. Now, let's take a look on the examples because the question is how that mass change for leaders today, at least for every one of us, you know, because we are leaders also in our role. Does anyone not aware that we were having pandemic, we were having this virus, you know, I was just in 2020 or December 2019, starting from Wuhan, for example. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any single person in the world right now would say like, no, I'm not aware. <laughs> it's hard to believe that yeah. there is no one single person not aware. But this pandemic is such a big wave of creating awareness yep. for people, for everyone. It might be on a different levels. It might be on different aspects. It might be for your health, mm -hmm. that create awareness for you that you need to live and eat healthy. Yep. Or it may create awareness for you that I need to pick up a different skill set. Why yep. am I ignoring that learning that my HR was providing us and I'm not attending at the time? Or why am I not picking up, you know, new learning? For example, I did not learn on how to order food online. I wish I learned before and right. all these bonuses during the online purchase, for example. So starting with the awareness, once it hit us, 
it will slip into our mindset. Okay. A person when have a mindset change and even have a mindset set to it, they will start seeking for the knowledge. Knowledge. Got it. Then when they have the knowledge, because pandemic is such a big wave, if you have a knowledge, but the environment doesn't play the role to the change, you can't change so much. If you have a friend of seven and all of them practice yoga and you're the one alone doesn't practice yoga, you can stand for so many months or you are just simply a hater to yoga, then you wouldn't do it. But chances are you may be dragged to one of the classes by your friends sure. because you want to do sure. it together. So that knowledge fit into you because you're seeking, because you now have the mindset that I have to eat healthy. I have to have the new skill set. I have to see my work in a different way. But because we are so long in that period, so-called pandemic, you know, different mm. countries may have a slightly different timeline, but let's say two years, it will change and it will build a certain skill set, namely technology, namely digitals, mm. right? And that's one small thing. Okay. And then from one thing build another. So how that changed for today, it definitely changed. It's so hard to change mindset in the past because it's hard to create awareness because they don't feel the needs. Because at, at the time, it was not such a big wave like this. Mm -mm -mm. So ahead, now, now if one has built that skill set on a certain routines that they have built, now the question is how to keep on going. Sure. If they have again the awareness like, I need to keep on going on doing this because I get the benefit of practicing yoga. I will keep on doing it. Okay, That's okay. a different step. Okay. Now, I, I've got a, a okay, comment from Sandeep first, right? Uh, and he liked your, your comment earlier. He said, you hit the nail on the head on influencing people if leaders themselves are not learning themselves, right? So he liked that and he said, yes, that is extremely important, which, which I'm going to just follow up. And he said, oh, I like the MAS acronym for Mindset Awareness Skills and Knowledge. Thank you very much for that, Sandeep. Uh, so you said, Awareness is extremely important. And hello, Sheikh Asan. Right? I hope I've got that pronunciation right. Uh, so you said what is extremely important is the awareness, right? Uh, and personally, I, I think that is extremely important. I, I, I've been beneficial enough uh, when I got in touch with Muller and she did some exercises with me. That's when I got into that level of awareness of certain areas. And then that's when I could improve my performance. So if I link it back, to leaders, right? And again, we, we started off by speaking about the environment today. So based on the environment today, and as leaders for them to show up, and you talked about collaboration, what, what is one important, or maybe three, I don't know, whichever it is, one important awareness leaders must have to drive that collaboration? What is your personal view? Interesting. So... Again, like the awareness of the leader must have to drive the collaborations. Mm -hmm. um, in my personal view, for the leader, the awareness that they have to change, it's really like when they are doing things may not be working anymore, how they were doing it in the past. That's right. Okay. Okay. So one of the awareness is uh, asking themselves what is not working currently, right? Yeah, for example, it's collaboration. Some people mm. may refer collaboration like a teamwork. Some right. may see collaborations like, you know, we have to work together, bring people together. But I also see opportunity like collaboration, meaning like you may work with someone that you don't know. You may work with someone that you don't like at all. Mm. You may work with someone like, you know, just for the sake of having the volume, do you actually have to combine with the others, for example, just to get this done? Or you right. may collaborate with totally different. That means you have to be able to influence. That means you need to be able to actually explain what it means for the other person, the benefit of collaborating with you. Okay. Okay. So what I'm hearing is... Uh... You, you probably, even if you want to collaborate, one particular skill could be 
the way you communicate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's about being aware about what is not working. And even if you say it's about collaboration, it could be about the way we approach the way uh, in communication. What about, I know this is uh, Mala's favorite topic, what about emotions? Emotions have always been a very interesting topic to talk about. It's very, yes. very deep as well. It's touched on quite on personal levels. Um, like, I think emotions for everyone is very different in, in the sense that how they see things, what it means for them. Mm. Uh, I just, before this, I just had a conversation with a colleague of mine just here okay. in this room. And he walked in and in, and he asked me, you know, certain things. And then I said, I respond to him by saying, look, in the past, if certain things are not working in our way or how we prefer how it is being done, we probably get upset. And then we probably okay. really like, I don't want to work with you. Okay. But nowadays, you can't play that, that game or that kind of behavior anymore. Okay. Because there are certain things maybe so matter for you, but mm -hmm. for others, it doesn't matter for them. Okay. Okay. So you just have to learn to be aware of your own emotion on certain things, but okay. you also don't be so caught up with the emotion itself. And you don't think of other things on how to be able to collaborate. Right, right. Uh, the reason why I brought up emotions is because I believe that it's also important part in developing as leaders. Being mm -hmm. self-aware about your own emotion and how that, how you bring those emotions up in your relationship and in the way you collaborate, because that is an important factor also. So yeah. how do you then, how should we then approach leadership development in the post-pandemic era? Okay. Um, I probably will answer a slightly different uh, answer okay. if you don't mind. No, that's fine. Um, that's fine. No, please, please, please. We love difference. We love <laughs> difference. <laughs> I'm passionate for okay i'm passionate working with leaders but of course leaders okay. there are certain different levels you know whether you are at the top of the house whether you are a the first time manager whether you are in the middle level for examples okay now i like to tap into for those as a first time manager during the pandemic because those in the middle and the senior levels or the top of the house they have learned managing the team for mm. so many years now yes. the change is only like because of technology, because of how you measure the productivity. But for the first time manager, especially when they were promoted during the pandemic, uh, during the year of 2020, 2021, mm -hmm. that was their real experience mm -hmm. and what it means for them as a being leader or manager. They have no playbook. I mean, there was no playbook really being set or being offered like, look, this is how it's done in the past. Right. But it's very different. So what they see as as what are the experience of managing people are what actually happening in there, which is like half working from home or even mm. sometimes completely working from home. What trust means to them, how they can gain the trust from the team members, how they can measure productivity, how can they even actually engage with the team members. Even terminologies like, you know, we discussed quite heavily with, with Malar in the past, like psychological safety. I mean, those right. two terms were not really introduced in the past. I mean, we, you know the terms, you heard about the terms, but mm -hmm. I guess for the last few years, it's so often those two terms, those two words being mentioned. Because mm -hmm. everyone's conditions is very different when you talk to them. You don't know their backgrounds. You don't know sure. what happens to them simply because I see you in a Zoom, in, in a screen like this. Okay, okay. Okay. So, so I like I, to talk hmm. with those in the in that population as my focus and see how I can do differently post pandemic, particularly for this population. Right, it's right. very different aspect as well on how to develop them. This being we need to look at the approach and also need to look at what actually they need to pick up, what we need to equip them when they're just being promoted. Okay. 
I, I think you, I, I know, Malad, I'll hand it over to you soon, right? But I, I, this is a very interesting thing because what, what you're again uh, coming back to is you, you need to be aware about the environment. You need to be aware about the challenges people have faced. And I like the fact that you you picked up a, a small, a, 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 an important segment of your leadership group, the new leaders. Because the new leaders who came into that space during pandemic, they were like, oh my God, how do I now deal with this? I've got a new team. I've got a team to lead, but how do I do it? You know, because I don't have that, that the tools that was used in the past. Now I've got to learn new tools, but there's no playbook for me to learn it from. So there's, there was a lot of learning they had to do on the ground. Some may have worked, some may not have worked. And today you're in a position where you need to look at whatever they've learned and then look at how to leverage and move them forward again, right? Because there's another set of learning again, right? And, and this yeah. is also important because uh, uh, you, you spoke about psychological safety, which Muller is going to chip in now. And this is also important, right? This is also important. Yes, Muller, you raise your eyebrows. <laughs> You're talking about uh, psychological safety. No, no, this is Malar is going to chip in, so Malar is finding where to find the chips now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you have a thought about that? No, I'm really not. Excited about... Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll let you finish with Mashi first. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm pretty much done because I saw Sandeep's uh, comments. I'm just going to be I'm very excited to bring yeah. them all up later. But no, go ahead, go ahead. You, you want to comment something? Uh, yeah, no, no. I I just thought uh, was very interesting. What I realized about Mashi in the conversation is that she's not talking about what everybody is talking about. She is yes. looking yes. for really, literally, the blind spots that we might miss because it doesn't absolutely right may not may not be a a common top priority that you read in um uh in in the different research that comes out. But what she is doing is that. She's actually answering those um, questions, right? Because, yep. you know, when, when you spoke about awareness, I think that's really big, um, you know, uh, because she mentioned, uh, you know, how awareness is the one that will actually drive the mindset, mm. right? While we, you know, while if we, we look at change, right, we are, we are always saying, you know, we need to change mindset, we need to change mindset. But if I have no reason to change, why should I change? We don't change for the sake of changing, right? That's right. Now, and what I liked about what Marshi also said is that, you know, for leaders, you know, when, how do we create this awareness? She said, well, if they're not getting the results, if whatever I was doing isn't working, then mm -hmm. time for me to change it. Now, that's fantastic, right? But um, I think my question, that the question that I had with both, uh, both that, um, you know, uh, topics or, or your input is that, you see, when things are not working, it's easy to pause and say, what am I missing out? But even things are working, but we know it can work better with change. Okay. Which is, right? Then I am wondering how do we create that awareness? Because I think what tends to happen is that the awareness is sometimes created when there's a problem situation. When okay. the pro problem is resolved, we also forget, like, it's like looking at your blind spot, you know, your additional mirror, only okay. when you're trying, well, this is what I do, when I'm when I'm trying to, you know, move to another <laughs> lane, right? But the moment I have moved back and things are smooth and I'm not in trouble, I tend to, you know, just put that on snooze and forget that that's still important, isn't it? It is just like, you know, when we talk uh, pandemic, you know, work from home. There were a lot of shifts, technological shifts that we made, a lot of new skills that we learned, including us, which yes. we, which was already in our, on our plate and in the pipeline pre-pandemic. But the pandemic pushes you to go faster and then suddenly you realize you can learn more and do more than you thought you could. And then post-pandemic, it's like working from home, right? You know, first you hear everyone saying, okay, working from home is fantastic, right? Now that we are back into the organization, even though we are saying hybrid, we know that managers are not all that excited about hybrid work or working from home, okay? Uh, a lot of them are already indicating, I want everybody here because I want to go back to what I was good at my old skills. Mm. It's easier, right? I know I had to stretch myself, 
But you know, now that I have an option, why don't we go back to the past? Because it's just easy and I'll feel better. So how do you continue to create awareness when one, we are slipping back to our old habits? Okay. Number two is what we are doing is working, but we also have data from the environment that we need to do other things for it to work better. And I don't have a burning platform. So there was two questions. I'm going to keep quiet. Okay. So what is the first question again? Because there's a lot of wonderful things you said. Ayo. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the first question is how how do we continue to bring about awareness okay. when people want to go back to old practices? Okay. So what you're saying is uh, uh, we will always want to go back to the old ways. Like you gave the example of your your blind your mirror. So how do you uh, ensure that we create that awareness so that we do not necessarily go back to the old ways if it's not benefiting us? That's a good question. Marsh. Okay. Um, funny enough, just actually yesterday, I had similar conversation like this with another HR partners here. The question here is really, I would like to ask first, what sort of thinking that you have that you want to go back to the way the things were? Mm. Wow. Because even they want to, can't you? That's the question I would like to pose next. If you would like to go back how things were, you know, tell me more about this. What's the thinking behind it? And after the person dance with the thinking process of doing that, then the next question is, can we bring back how we were then with the current condition? This is what we live right now. Chances is it's very slim. So we can't go back. It's for sure we can't go back to how things are. It's not that I'm, I know for sure. But the point is how, why and what actually the chances that we can do that? Mm. Because I learned in, the, in my in personal levels, everyone condition changes because it's pandemic. The things that we love to get how we were, like the traveling, but like we couldn't travel like we still can travel though, but it will not be the same the way we travel, for example. So there's like, you need to set what the priorities now and going forward. Mm. I think the second okay. question that you have is if we are good and how to bring them to continue to be better. I I don't know if I can say this for sure, but um, but one thing I learned from the seven habits of highly effective people is from Stephen Covey. If you look at the these seven habits, at least at the early parts of the book or early parts of uh, this thinking, that is the paradigm shift. If no one has a paradigm shift, you can try introduce, you can try to create the awareness, but it's hard to change. So now right. the question is, how much effort you would like to do that if they don't have the burning needs to do that? You can, but you will be keep dragging them. You will keep bringing them to, to you to tell them like you need to change you need to change you may say that 10 times 100 times but they will just do it because for the sake of you as a manager asking them to do it but you expect them taking accountability from them that's where awareness needs to come in or else they will just take it as taking the box i'm doing it because my boss asked me to do it so that my boss will not keep nagging me to do it So it has Again, that's just to be, my view. Okay, so so what you're saying is uh, we still need to have a constant communication about it. Yeah. Right? Okay. I, and I like the fact that you said uh, about the changes, right? Uh, you, you, if you want to go back to the past, you still got to take a pause, self-reflect, and ask ourselves, what is the thinking behind this? What is the reason why we say we want to go back to the old ways? And perhaps start looking again and prioritizing what is really important. So I like that. I mean, you, you've been very consistent all the way. It's all about taking a pause, self-reflecting. How can I be better? And, and therefore, then look at what are the steps I need to take. Right Now, yeah. uh, Sandeep had a question. I just want to ask that question. What can I bring to 
the table by collaborating, which can mutually benefit two or more parties. So this is in line with, remember much earlier you said a collaboration is extremely important and this is one way that we need to go forward, understanding this new environment. So in, in your views, right, uh, what would be some of the benefits or what can I bring to the table by collaborating, which can be mutual benefit? I like the question from Sandeep because the way the question, it started by saying, by asking what I can bring to the table, yes. meaning he looks at inside him what I can do instead of asking questions like what others will bring that, which no. out of your control. So what I can bring to the tables if I put myself in that situation, then I will see that what actually that I am good at and more importantly, would I be willing to open and listen? Mm. Because again, I learned big time from this pandemic that you will never know exactly the situations or the other person that you talk to. You think that you get to know them well, you think that you know them well, but again, you never know exactly what's happened. Just a few hours ago, just yesterday, for example. So be open-minded and try to listen. Easy? Definitely not. Because our minds is full of so many things. You know, we may have something in our head while we are still talking to each other, for example. So try, I keep reflecting on myself like, okay, I'm trying to be focused for this minute. I'm mm -hmm. trying to focus for this hour, for example, and try to listen. And do my okay. best to just ask questions rather than commenting, for example. Okay. I, I like that. And it appears to me, uh, because I, uh, like I said, you are doing a lot of self-reflection and all that. And I really like that. And that's, I think that's a very important step, the self-awareness before you do make any changes. And I can see how even in this conversation, you 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 kind of coached, uh, you, you, you praised Sandy, and then you looked at a way to help him and then put better context into even his statement. I mean, you started off by saying what can, uh, he's talking about, what can I bring to the table as opposed to what other people can bring. So I like that, which also tells me then, or I have a question, how has the role of talent development professionals changed today? Okay. So if I connect to what Sandeep was just asking, was saying, mm -hmm. If my role as a talent learning or talent development person, what I can bring or what has the role changed today? Mm -hmm. Now, we need to look at ourselves first. If you're talking about talent development, there's a first word that is talent. Well, I personally see everyone has a talent. It's okay. just different from one another person. So I like to ask questions to myself as how much do I know about you? How much do I know about these talents? How much do I know about them? So how the role has changed so far, if you think that you have a good relationship with them, you have a good partnership with them, try to be even better. Try to be even closer doing that. You know, they have challenges. You, you think you know their challenges, but have those challenges changed or not? How much do you know? How much are you willing to spend time talking to them and understand? And oftentimes that we have so many things going on on our plates, we take the conversations very lightly. Okay, I'm going to have a 15-minute conversation with who and who, and then I, I feel like I'm taking the boss. Honestly speaking, sometimes I do that when I'm I'm on a deadline on certain things. Okay. Okay. And I admit it, I do that. But it's it's a constant that we need to do that to understand that, and then be advisory to them. Okay. You can only do that if you understand and know where they are at. Be advisory doesn't mean that every time you give input, you give recommendation. Be advisory at the same time by asking questions. Now, asking questions can be a tricky part. You know, is it really asking questions to fulfill your curiosity? But is it asking questions that really make your talent to think, make your leaders think and pause, or pause and think then, aha, I might think this differently. And not slowly build that. Because sometimes people see that we play the advisory role because you are waiting for me to tell you what mm. would be the answers. You're waiting for me to tell you where to go. In fact, I was challenged by one of a colleague in the office from our original office in a few months back, like, have you asked these questions? Have you got into their heads what 
they were thinking about this. Wow. So I started to do that and it gives them a very different way of working relationship with them. Of course, there's a technique of how we ask questions, you know. Yes, yes. Sometimes we may come across like, why are you asking me this? So then put a context and how you ask the question. That's really key. And the role role as a talent development. Nice. So what, what I'm hearing from you is uh, let's not just go through a tick box action thing because of timelines or operational pressures, but take the time to be curious about the other person. Exercise yeah. empathy to understand the person's challenges. Know the person at a deeper level or the team's, the team's challenges, right? And understand where they're coming from. And at times, you would have to take the advisory role by asking more deeper questions, not to offer them solutions, but to get them to think about solutions. So that's what I'm hearing. And, and, and that's a very important skill for, uh, for talent development professionals to have. You know, uh, I, I, it would be fantastic uh, if all talent development uh, 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 professionals become aware about this uh, the way you have articulated it. So thank you very much for that, Marsh. And Muller is giving me dagger eyes. He said, this is not Marsh and Ashok show. Okay, Muller, let's go. Let's you go. Let you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I, I had a counter question for Marsh, uh, Marsh, Marshy. I'm calling him Marsh. Marshy. Now, I, I mean, I think what uh, Marshy is saying is ID. And, and I know Marshy works very hard at it, right? Like, so I'm, I'm not looking at leaders who are like Marshy. I, I think the real challenge is that I think one is we have an ongoing challenge for leaders. One is they don't have time for communication. Mm. Because if you look at the kind of things that's sitting in your inbox and in your in train, physical or virtual, the number of things that ticks that you need to make in your to-do list is never ending. Now, mm -hmm. and this is what you're measured for. Yeah, leaders are measured for this result. Ideally, you are supposed to get this results through your people, which is why the communication and the inspiration and the coaching and all that you're saying is ideal, right? Mm. Mm -mm. Now, post-pandemic, what we are hearing is the to-do list has increased, right? Because there were some things that worked in communication in the past is not available now. Yeah. There was some information when I'm working in the same space. I don't have to have a conversation, but I can hear what's going on and I can, I'm receiving data anyway. Today, I'm cut away from data, which means that as a leader, I need to make more effort to do a catch up. On one hand, forget about skills. Eh? So one is I need to do more catch up because now I'm cut off from information. Hmm. on one hand on the other hand we're trying to catch up with post-pandemic you know let's get updated with our numbers now how do you think in terms of talent development we can actually help leaders bridge this because this is a real problem and this is assuming they have communication skills i'm going to assume that people want the idea and we know people don't, right? But but this is the real challenge because when you speak to good leaders and good managers, they know this. And a lot of the good leaders, and, and that's why we do this show, do this at their own expense, at their own time, at putting in longer, longer working hours for conversations that really matters, right? Uh, mm -hmm. All right. So, so tell me, in talent development, how do you, how do you bridge this, uh, you know, from, from a development point of view? Uh, when I looked at, when I work with leaders in the organizations, there are some leaders naturally just passionate about development. Mm -hmm. I can't say, and I will not take credit because me, then they become like that. No, it's actually just them. Like we said a while ago at the beginning, if the leaders take time and learn for themselves, potentially mm. they're going to demonstrate and influence the team and drive the team to do so. There are leaders are just like that, which is very nice having working relationship with them. You can you can do so many things with, with them. But their leaders are just really 
which is um, the real thing as well in the organizations that they actually drive business. They look at their talents are good to drive the business, but it's not taking a pause and really look at like how we are going to develop these leaders or the team members for going forward. And where our roles become critical is actually to work with this kind of leaders. Okay. And I'm also not talking about my role as a talent development person to draft or to, I mean, yes, we will do that, but that is not my number one and the critical like to tell and to determine, okay, this is the theme for our talent to develop themselves. Collaborations, for example. No, I think it should even way before that. I see processes equally important. If the leaders are not observing, are not really looking into their talents, how they are, I believe leaders actually know their team members' strengths and developments. Because you work every day. The leaders work with their team members every day. They do know that. But there are some leaders would really spend the time, even extra, to try work on how I can help my team members to address this, to get better. And some are just leave it to me like, tell me what I should be doing. But the question is what you have been doing. Because I'm not every day with the leaders, I'm not every day with your team members. Mm -hmm. So it's actually our job to work with these leaders, having that conversations again, asking the question, are we asking the right question? Again, to make them aware like, ah, I have been doing slightly different. Perhaps I should start thinking about this. So I'm having conversation like this with the leaders like, you can do this. But what do you see if you keep doing this? If you keep doing this for so many months, what you foresee this thing will have happened? Mm. Sure. So that kind of having that conversation is key. But really looking at the process as well, when we are talking about talent developments, mm -hmm. do we come in with the leaders just to take notes like, okay, you have three talents based on our discussion. What do you want to develop with these three talents? Tell me. Okay. Uh, but even they do so, you need to ask questions as well. Where you're coming from with this, with this sure. theme, for example. Sure. From what you mentioned, it echoes with what Sandeep is saying. He said, be a leader as a coach. You know, uh, with the team or a coaching leadership. So that's that's what you're echoing. You know, I like that. Mm -hmm. Which also goes back to a, an earlier statement that is made uh, about changes across internal and external environment are challenges impacting and aligning uh, with the main vision statement of the mission. Right. So so the are pressures from the business point of view. So how do you then look at developing the talent with awareness to ensure that they still meet their business results? That is, again, having the conversations between the leaders and their supporting okay. it. Yeah. I may have the, lead, the conversation with the leaders of tap into the leaders thinking what they see developments of the team members has. But okay. the question is, do they have the same question with their supporting needs? Hmm. Sandeep a while ago said that be a leader, be a coach. You know, as a leader, you need to be a coach. I think that actually need to be further discussed. It can be a long discussion. Because nice. you may find leaders who think that they do coaching, do they do a real coaching? Mm -hmm. Or were they instructing? Were they really listening? Right. It's hard because you have the, Mala, you like the term emotions. You are as a manager, you as a leader, and you coach your team members. But if you don't, Put that not being like you're not being emotion, but if you're aware of your emotion when having that coaching conversation with your team members, if you're not really listening, if you're not trying to jump in or cut them off, like that's then it's not a coaching. That's emotions also comes in, and it will sometimes in my view you better don't do coaching rather than if you don't do it right. But what we hear more often is actually I do coaching, problems don't get fixed. I have a conversation with some junior manager and he kept saying, it's not my problem because I've done coaching as how I was trained, how I was taught. Mm -hmm. And 
problems don't go away. It's not mine anymore. It's my subordinate. And I said, okay, do you dare enough or do you brave enough to have a role play with anyone here? Demonstrate with me how you were doing your coaching. Look, Malara and Ashok, I'm not saying I'm the expert. No. But, <laughs> but when we listen to that role play, we know that for the first few minutes, it's not listening. If you're doing a real coaching, I mean, just the coaching itself, it's hard because it takes really like curiosity and really listen and just reflecting on the coaching mindset, not us. Nice. And when the coaching, when the coach have the interest in mind, that will cloudy the conversations already. Okay. So there are some leaders who, yes. Okay, Malar, yes. Mashi, you are telling me as a leader and manager, I've got so many things to do, results to achieve, and you want me to do your job now, talent development and get to know. Why do we have talent development if I need to do all of this, Mashi? Because you're not doing it, that's why I'm here. Yeah, but the whole idea of talent <laughs> development is you, you guys are the expert, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right? you guys are the expert. It looks like now, you are just facilitating the conversation because you want me to listen to them, you want me to communicate with them, you want me to develop them, you want me to ask coaching questions and you want me to listen. Like there's so much of time you're asking me to invest and I think that's supposed to be your role. I'm a manager, I'm a leader, I'm supposed to lead this function. Why are you giving me this part of your job? And we can ask the leader like, do you, do you, ask get, the, do you yes. get this? Yeah. yeah. And my question has always been, I don't know, I'm not sure whether this is the right question or not, but what I usually do then, we just ask the leader or ask that manager where you are in terms of your relationship with your subordinate, that one particularly, where you see your results are, and where you would like to drive your result or business result to. So you're drawing basically the, the connection between relationship and results because we're supposed to get the results through the people. And as a manager and leader, you work on the people who are going to help you get the results that you want. I mean, that we know was uh, was the original intention of having managers and leaders, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. to, to basically inspire, to bring out the best talent you can and put it on the table so that then we can achieve the best results, right? As a mm -hmm. team, that was the role, right? But a lot of times you, I mean, at least in this part of the world, uh, managers and leaders think, you know, talent development, you know, even talent retention is not my job. My job is to just probably supervise and keep you and get, get the results in, right? I don't need to sit down and have conversations and relationships, but you're putting it back to say, hey, if you want your results, you know, get the relationship right and whatever the relationship requires, which is be curious, have conversations, coach them so that then they grow as people. Because what you seem to be doing is that you are helping leaders grow as leaders so that leaders can then coach um, and help their people grow as um, into self-leadership is what I am actually hearing, right? So that pushback is a very common pushback, which means that today the leaders need to, uh, those who don't believe, you know, those who are passionate about learning and development and development of the people, fine. Now, but... A lot of the issues that showing up today in terms of results, you know, quiet quitting being one, uh, the kind of data that we are getting where people don't feel trusted, where people feel that I'm doing my best, my, my boss don't think I'm, I'm good enough. So a lot of data now is showing because there is no relationship. If there's no relationship, then the way you and I think uh, definitely would be different, right? So if you looked focused on just leaders, right, what are some critical areas for leaders today to have this relationship because people are wanting relationship, right? People are wanting psychological safety. People are wanting their well-being to be taken care of. So people want a lot of things today. And the critical person there is the manager, the, my, the manager I report to. What are some critical areas you think these managers need in the new environment, in the shift that has happened so that people can be developed well? I think the very the very fundamental thing that the managers need to be aware of is this one simple fact. You as a manager has the most time spent with the subordinate than me as a talent development person. 
Okay. If you are the one having most time spent with them, and you're the one actually spend most time working with them. Mm. Now, if you're not taking care of that, I can only prescribe, but I don't bring anything to you unless you actually realize it that I'm going to work, I'm going to spend, or my subordinate are going to spend most time working with me. I better get these things right. I can only come in to help, but there's only so much I can help. So if the manager doesn't get that, foundation right at the beginning it's hard to move things around and hard to change you will keep having that you will see different progresses for the leaders if if they're aware of this so what the critical areas of that is that's very first foundation and take ownership of that and after they have that nice then the critical areas for nowadays with the hybrid environment it's really you see that what actually works in terms of engagement with your team members. Mm. Definitely everyone change. Those who may not really pay attention to the family in the past because they can work so crazily knowing that at the back end at the home, the wife or the husband can look after kids, but now it's changed. So everyone, it's like the starting point change now. So mm. unless you understand that, I mean, not to get into private or personal, but understands where you're at. When you ask questions, generally ask questions. I learned that people can very easily say, how are you? And then walk by. <laughs> but, but when you say, how are you? Really, how things are you? You know, you wouldn't believe me. When I say that, when I ask people like, how are you? I don't get answers. Yes, I didn't get answers for a question that I asked. But does it, does it slow me down to ask the question? No, I'll keep asking different person. So I tried to ask that. And I was taught by one of the facilitators that I met that when you ask, how are you? Seriously, ask the second time. Malar, how are you? You say, blah, blah, blah. And I said, Malar, how are you really? Are you? It will nice. give you different answers. Nice. Thank you very much for that, Marsh. Uh, Malar, we are into our one hour mark and it's so fast. And I still got a lot of, I still got another 20 questions for her. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sandeep has uh, uh, pointed out something. The question boils down to, are you as a leader looking at talent development as developing an employee professionally or as a better person? Bingo. I love that, Sandeep. That's right. I, I think that is the intention already. And I think what uh, Marsh has shown us, right, uh, and, and thank you again, Muller, for doing the role play. That I love that, you know, as a manager. Uh, because what Marsh has shown us is this. Hey, you know what? You want to hit your business results? Let's look at your relationships. Let's become self-aware about how that relationship is today. Are those your blind spots? And if those are your blind spots, then you have to go deeper and ask yourself, do you need to make prioritize some improvements so you can collaborate better? Right? And this, your team has been consistent. It's about being really focused about your self-awareness, about building the relationship, about collaborating, and being that genuine leader. Uh, and like what Sandeep has said, I totally agree, Sandeep. Is it, is it really about uh, uh, being a people leader in that sense? You know, bringing out the best in people or just developing uh, a talent professionally? Thank you very much for that, Sandeep. You helped us anchor the whole... Uh, session. <laughs> well, Muller, any last comments before we say goodbye? No, I, I just want to. I just want to thank Mashi for saying yes to the show and for really bringing bring that additional mirror we needed to look into the blind spots that we That's probably right. are not looking at when we look at what is you know going back to the foundations of uh, what it means to 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 change to get the results through people, which is what the core reason why leadership uh leadership roles begin to had had begin to exist right so we've just walked away from that and you've actually brought us back to that and if i had to summarize i will just say marshi is all about collaborate have conversation be curious and coach and after that listen listen listen, listen. but before all of that be aware so thank you marshi before we let you go, is there anything else you'd like to leave the audience with? 
Um, for me to say something? Yes. Would you like to say something audience. to the audience? Uh, <laughs> what would that be? Uh? Um, well, I guess in this world where things changing so rapidly, um, sometimes we also don't know things, how we will end, how we will lead. But I guess in everything we do, uh, be genuine. Um, I know today my role is a talent development. Everyone else may have a different role. Just be genuine um, and then just give your best when you work with anyone um, because things so differently and uh, things change so differently as well uh, so fast. So I guess um, be genuine and be, try to, you know, um, give the very best you can to whoever you work with. Thank you. And can I say that I will echo that because, you know, while we've been working with you, you've always been genuine and giving your best and encouraging us to do so. So thank you very much, Pashi, uh, for saying yes. Okay, now you better say goodbye you uh, to Josh. <laughs> yeah, all right. okay. Goodbye, Marsh. All right. Thank you all, guests. See you all again. Okay, now as we say goodbye, Pa, your, how, how's your brain right now? Okay, I'm all right. You're good, huh? So I think, as usual, we learned a lot from our speaker today, mm -hmm. Marshall Yanata from uh, Indonesia, Citibank, having years of experience in talent development. And you can see how passionate she is about real growth within as a person, you yep. know, really focused on awareness. And I would say that, I dare say that, you know, um, while she seemed to be soft-spoken, gentle, but she is really hard on awareness, hard yep. on real change. And very yep. courageous to ask the questions. Usually, yes. HR and talent will not pose to leaders. That's the true. question that we need to ask, but we don't ask. And because we didn't ask, we are having all the challenges that we are having because we think the answer is somewhere else. And Sandeep says, I would say, safe, safe, safe as a recession <laughs> is around, around the corner. corner. Ouch. And he said, thanks a lot. So that's what I'm taking back from uh, Marshi. Um, you know, and it's going to be a fulfilling week for me preparing for our next week's interview. So, Ashok, to you before we close. All right. Uh, I will see you all again. I won't be here next week, but I will be here in spirits. <laughs> and yes. Sean will and, be back. And, and no, don't worry. We're not letting go of Ashok. So, Ashok has a fan club now. <laughs> We're not letting go of Ashok. He will be in and out because we'll be taking turns because he has already formed a fan club. So with that, thank you very much. Um, have a brilliant week. Till we meet you next week with another very interesting practitioner. A practitioner, a leader, who probably has the best results in terms of uh, retaining his team and developing his team. And he is not nice. from HR. So with that, good night. Goodbye. Good night. Goodbye.